to a brand new episode of the Comics Box. I'm Richard Cole, and today I want to kind of talk about some of my biggest fears for the MCU's version of Secret Wars. Okay, so without getting too in depth, we're in phase, what, five now? Um, Phase 4 has been kind of a disappointment. Um, I'll do a video on just just what I thought worked and what hasn't worked. Um, right now what's working, for me anyway, is Season 2 of Loki. So I, I liked what I've seen so far, just the two episodes in. Um, that gives me a little hope as far as the direction. But to do something as big as Secret Wars, um, you know, the expectations, um, you know, you've had the classic 80s run of Secret Wars, as well as, you know, Jonathan Hickman's 2015 classic, which I think the MCU is kind of adapting from that. I know I've heard some things that saying that they're adapting from both. Um, but if you had told me just like immediately after Endgame that the multiverse saga is where they were going and that it was going to culminate in Secret Wars, I would have been very excited about that. But like I said, as we've gone through Phase 4, I know me personally, um, I don't feel the connection uh, between the films and the series. Um, the way that, you know, even with some of the films within the first three phases, you know, something like Ant-Man 1 and 2, um, yeah, I'm say maybe not just to throw a dark word, but yeah, like Ant-Man 1 and 2, Captain America Winter Soldier, where those obviously didn't have direct connections to Infinity War and Endgame, um, they definitely advanced the character. So they, they were vehicles to advance the character to where when you get to an Infinity War, when you get to an Endgame, then those characters are well developed to where, okay, now you're invested, you know. So giving the high stakes of Infinity War and Endgame, you're invested in the characters because you've give, been given a reason to care. Here with, you know, the Phase 4 going into Phase 5, you know, we're introduced to this character, we're introduced to that character, is this character. And without any follow-up um, to having say, oh, well, this character is now going to appear, you know, you've seen them in this Disney Plus series, now they're going to be in this next movie coming up. Now, you know, granted, the pandemic and then the thing with Disney and the mandate to increase production so you're getting you were getting more quantity than quality with a lot of this stuff like i said that's a whole separate video but all of this is me as a comic book fan or comic book movie fan it's really got me a little like okay am, am i invested in this as i want to be now so when it comes to secret wars um i used to have the run from the 80s and and that was it was it was cool it was enjoyable you know this was back when you know you did have like the big crossed over events and the big event comics but they were a little bit fewer and far between in those days than now it seems like every week there's an event and then they renumber the comics and start all over again and reboot here and renumber there and I don't know, it gets a little bit much sometimes but um, but I read the 2015 Jonathan Hickman Secret Wars and actually rereading it again now. And I, I love that story. And I would love for Marvel to adapt certain elements of it. But again, there's a few things so far that are missing that could affect that. So, like I said, I just want to kind of go over about five different things on you know why I'm worried that 
this may not be the movie that I'm expecting. So, number one, uh, the changes for the adaptation won't work the way changes made for Civil War work. Um, you know, when it was announced that they were going to do Secret War, I mean, yeah, excuse me, Civil War in the MCU, Captain America Civil War, uh, they were adapting that. I was really excited, but then I'm thinking like, well, you know, the original comic, you know, you had the premise, um, because you didn't have, you know, a particular set of heroes, um, to set the tone for that, but what I like about the MCU version is that they found a way to write around that, they came up with an original premise, so instead of it being this young inexperienced superhero team you have Avengers with some veteran members but you still had some rookie members kind of you know with Falcon um, Scarlet Witch that you know although you know Sam came off really well um, in his heroics but it was Wanda you know that with her inexperience as a superhero that became the catalyst for the Sokovia Accords. So, you know, that, that was a pretty good idea, you know. Um, but again, you had the core characters that were needed. Um, you needed Captain America in there. You needed Iron Man in there. Um, it was a bonus to get Spider-Man because yeah the original comic book yeah there was a key story for Spider-Man but I mean again they wrote for the film an original premise so it wasn't like you had this experienced Spider-Man in the MCU and it was like oh he has to reveal his identity um, I do love the twist that okay they brought him in again as another kind of rookie superhero and but later when you get into things like Far From Home, No Way Home, where his identity is exposed, but then it wasn't exposed by his choice because of the Superhero Registration Act. It was because he was outed by Mysterio. So, spoilers, folks. Um, but yeah, so I'm kind of worried that with the type of story that you need, especially if they're adapting uh, Jonathan Hickman's run, is that you don't have those core characters that you need even if you're going to change something here or just say it's Secret Wars but it's an original story because obviously they set up Kang as the big bad now I don't know if that's still misdirection or not but apparently for all intents and purposes at least up until G Kang Dynasty then he will be the major villain and this is kind of going into my next point. Like I said, you don't have the core characters established within the MCU to sell this story. So, which leads me to number two, which is Doctor Doom is swapped out for Kang as the main villain, at least as far as we know. You know, we don't know what the script is, we don't know what the story is, we don't know how Kang Dynasty is going to end. Um, you know, if he comes out like Thanos winning like in Infinity War, does he come out on top and then it takes Secret Wars? I've got some theories about that, but that's for another another video. But yeah, you don't have Doctor Doom established in the MCU. Uh there were Easter eggs with the Moon Knight series, but again, it's one of those little things that wasn't built upon anywhere else like you know you would have certain post credit scenes in you know phase one two and three that if it didn't kind of lead to the over you know the overreaching story then it set up like okay well you're going to see this character then appear either in their own movie or they're going to be a key player in you know another film down the line you know like soon you know you would at least a year or two you know not 
here it is five years later, you know, we still haven't seen, <laughs> you know, it, where are the Eternals, where's Star Fox, where's, you know, what's happening with this new Guardians team now that Guardians of the Galaxy is, you know, that trilogy's ended, um, you know, Spider-Man, is, is he in another alternate reality, or what, you know, how is he figuring into all of this now, you know, um, What's Namor doing? That's another key player. Like I said, we'll get into that a little later as well. But, you know, will they have time to establish Doom as a major player in the MCU? So when you do get to Secret Wars. Now, the beauty of it is they've pushed these things back even further. Um, number one, I think, first and foremost, is quality control. Um, I think they kind of realize, okay, we've made some mistakes, now we got to do some course correction. And two, we still have a writer's strike. I mean, excuse me, not a writer's strike. We, have, we still have the actor's strike that's going on. So the longer that goes, then the more things are going to get delayed as well. So, you know, after significant delays caused by the writer's strike originally, or having both writers and actors on strike at the same time at one point, um, but, you know, I guess obviously once the, you know, the actor strike is over, they can make Fantastic Four priority, but they haven't said that Doom was the villain in that story. Um, I know it was rumored that he was going to either have a post credit scene in Wakanda forever, and that didn't pay off, or it's loosely understood that he was kind of like the big bad behind the scenes with the trying to find the vibranium again who knows who knows so yeah so it'd be interesting to see what they do if they're going to swap out doom for kang which you know i enjoy you know so far jonathan major's portrayal of kang thus far you know first is he he who remains um despite what I feel about Quantumania, um, he was one of the highlights, you know, he was a strong villain in that, um, so I don't know, we'll see, so number three, trying to fit too many characters or actors from previous franchises for fan service instead of story, okay, so I enjoyed to a point Doctor Strange and Multiverse of Madness um, I didn't think it was a bad film but again like I said that might be a topic for another video um, but I am looking forward to Deadpool 3 and what they're setting up for that you know they brought back Hugh Jackman there's rumors that you know it's Deadpool murders the you know Fox MCU so that that would be very interesting you know we've already had um, No Way Home which I you know I enjoyed that film a lot um, you know I, I thought it was a pretty good you know despite with the you know implications of the multiverse or that this might be one of the cracks or one of the branches in you know the fractured timeline um, I enjoy it you know I, I thought it was a pretty good spider-man story self-contained you know in doing that but with all the rumors like oh well they're gonna have Tobey Maguire do this and then oh and, and then we're gonna have this actor and then they're gonna bring back this actor and I think while that was cool like it was cool seeing say John Krasinski as Reed Richards as something that I know I was looking forward to um, that one of those no-brainer castings um, and I hope that they keep him I don't know but apparently maybe not but either way you know to kind of get that you know kind of automatic cheer in the theaters you know are, is it gonna be this cameo that cameo and not much of a story like okay well you've seen this cameo up oh, well here's this person they come in and they get taken out or it's going to be a big cameo fest 
running up against Kang. Um, again, I mean, if they do it right, if it's the right characters, um, and you're utilizing the actors so they can, you know, do justice to those characters for the story, then cool. But like I said, if it's just going to be a cameo fest and like I said, there's no story, then there could be some problems. So number four is that there are key characters in the actual comic book that won't translate over to the film. Uh, there will be key characters that won't be in it. Um, one of the, the, the highlights is T'Challa. Um, working closely with Reed Richards, um, even the backstory, um, which I'm hoping that's what Kang Dynasty sets up, um, or maybe the Fantastic Four going into Kang Dynasty, whatever. I hope those two films set it up. Maybe that might be one way they can bring T'Challa back. Uh, I know you saw the last video about recasting. Um, I'll go more in depth on that with another video, but. I think this is one of the ways whether you do it as a kind of a if it's part of the Fantastic Four then it might be too much at that point but maybe like introduce them in a post credit scene you know establish this is an alternate reality or another branch in the multiverse a branch timeline and then like I said really introduce him into Kang Dynasty the way he was introduced in Civil War, introduce him that way, you know, where you get who he is as a character, you know, what his motivations are, what his, you know, what his backstory, or, or plan enough of his backstory to where, no, you don't need a trilogy of films, or you don't have to just rush into a Black Panther 3 to set it up, you know, because Civil War did that brilliantly. Where it's like, okay, this is T'Challa. This is why he's here. This is why he is now Black Panther. This is why he is doing what he is doing. And you really got to sympathize and really get into his character. And he had a little arc right there, which then carried over into the Black Panther film. And, you know, had Chadwick Boseman, you know, had he lived, I think that you know he was going to be a key player in this multiverse saga and if you read the Jonathan Hickman Secret Wars the 2015 Secret Wars then you see why and two if you know just read a lot of previous except for the John Ridley one just read a lot of previous Black Panther arcs like you know Reggie Hudlin or Christopher Priest and really get an understanding of just who this character is and why he would be important. Um, like I said, the comics leading up to Secret Wars, the Avengers comics, New Avengers comics, uh, Luminati, um, like I said, where it's T'Challa and Reed Richards and they're creating technology to deal with the incursion. Um, and then once you get into the actual Secret Wars comic, like I said, you have these established players that are there. Again, Reed Richards, that's another one. You know, that's an established character. Doctor Doom is a central character. You know, all of these, you know, that they have dialogue and conflict and it's a culmination of hero and villain you know that was decades in the making and is coming to a head with this you know with this story but uh, we may not see that because doom won't be the central figure probably um you don't we, we haven't seen kang unless he's the villain in fantastic four you know then we won't get to see that conflict and we won't get it won't get to see it resolved uh, there, like I said, T'Challa's role. Once they're in Battle World, you know what his role is. Um, 
you know, in the comics, there's the team up with Peter Parker and Miles Morales that we won't see unless, I don't know, will we get a Spider-Man 4 that will introduce a Miles Morales or will, you know, will that be somebody that, hey, be a good idea. If you're going to reestablish T'Challa just like in Civil War, if you do that with Kang Dynasty, then you can introduce Miles Morales the same way you introduce Tom Holland Spider-Man in Civil War. He's there, you know the backstory, you get little hints of it, but you get to see who he is, what he can do, and then when it goes over into Secret Wars, so I don't know, if they do that, then that might work, but so far it doesn't. Um, again, we talked about Doctor Doom, um, Molecule Man, so that's another key player in the Secret Wars story. Um... So, I mean, unless he's the villain in Fantastic Four. You know, um, I mean, you know, this is just a theory. I don't think this is what they're going to do, but that would be cool if, say, you have the Fantastic Four. I know you got to establish the Fantastic Four. This is why I think this would have worked better if you had a Fantastic Four one kind of within the last year or two then this would have been your Fantastic Four 2 having the Molecule Man as the villain introducing T'Challa and the way you introduce him would be similar to Fantastic Four 52 but it would be different because he's more established as King in this um, instead of testing the Fantastic Four to help him take down Claw you would use him to help take down Molecule Man that would be a that would have been a good idea. Like I said, had there been a Fantastic Four one, th I mean previously, and then this would have been Fantastic Four two. But I don't. I think it would be too much if you tried to do it that way. <coughs> Excuse me. But like I said, maybe if they introduced the child in a post credit scene of some sort. That might be a good idea. Um, but if they don't do that, like I said, to establish him in Kang Dynasty the same way he was kind of set up in Captain America Civil War, I think that would be a really good option to do that. All right, and then our fifth and final is that the course correction is too little too late to build to a satisfactory ending. So this means that going forward, and like I said, with Loki, it's already a good sign because I think with them, I think it, they've already had sort of their own in-house quality control uh, with Tom Hiddleston being one of the executive producers. Um, the way the first season was coordinated, it was a matter of getting everyone cast crew on the same page and they kind of took it on as their personal you know the goal to achieve success you know it was their personal goal as well as the goal of Marvel or the goal of Disney Plus or whatever and I think where although yeah there were one or two episodes within Loki that to me kind of were flawed the, it to me it stuck the landing and it advanced the story and it built the anticipation um, and with season two so far with the first two episodes um, as this is being taped um, they, they're building on that to me I think it's working and if now if we can get the rest of the MCU on the same page and see that oh okay this is how the multiverse is working this is how it's established this point forward this is how we're going to deal with certain films and yeah I think that type of course correction I think it can work but at the same time we've had so much disappointment that even if they did course correct it could be too little too late but like I said the advantage now is that 
with things being delayed, with them looking more at the quality of the product now, that I, I do believe they are on the right track, and I do believe they can pull off some wins with this. But now, you know, it's just like, I think with, you know, here we have Loki Season 2 that's so far successful. But then you've got the Marvels coming up, and is that going to be successful? It's kind of like with DC now. It's like, okay, well, let's get these films out and let them do what they can. If they make money, cool. If they're not going to make money, it won't really hurt us in the long run. Because, I mean, the films, you know, not every film is a billion-dollar film. Um, you know, even if, like, a certain film, depending on the budget, I know the delays because of the pandemic that bumped up costs for a lot of films so it's impossible to recoup because of those delays um, even if the film is good even if the film is likable you know it's a tough one but I think again going forward they're looking at the quality and they'll probably bring some of these budgets down to say well okay now you're really forced to tell a story you're really forced to sell this character you know um, you know, you still have the CGI, you still have the special effects to deal with, but I think it'll be less of a strain on those aspects of filmmaking if your writing is solid and your characters are solid and the story is solid. So, that's it. So, in a nutshell, um, changes for the adaptation may not work the way the changes made for something like Civil War, adapting Civil War, or adapting Infinity War, um, which is radically different from the comic book versions, but they were able to tell an original, satisfying, you know, entertaining story. Um, Doctor Doom being swapped out for Kang as the main villain. Um, they've swapped characters for certain things before um, for the sake of the story for the sake of whatever the supporting characters or the main character um, and it's worked well uh, trying to fit too many characters or slash actors for fan service uh, that's that's the one I'm really worried about because like I said I enjoyed No Way Home and enjoyed things like you know uh, Multiverse of Madness uh, those were cool cameos or you know, it was cool seeing certain people back in the roles that made them famous or roles that they made the characters more famous because they did their job. Um, but I don't want to see it as a cameo fest. Like I said, I want a good story and I want to really be invested with these characters. And then key characters not being in it are T'Challa's, where we probably won't see Peter Parker and Miles Morales teamed up. Uh, may not see Doctor Doom, may not see Molecule Man. Um, you know, will we see Iron Man? <laughs> or if we do, who's going to play Iron Man? See, there's a lot of good questions in there. Um, course correction, too little, too late. Um, right now, I think. Uh, an advantage of these strikes um, it's given the creators time to kind of sit back or it's given some of in the case of Disney it's given you know folks like Bob Iger time to pause or hit the pause button um, see Kevin Feige you know maybe not spread so thin cutting back on the number of shows produced the number of films produced and focusing on okay fewer films fewer TV shows but great quality, great acting, and so forth. But what do you think? Um, are you just as worried about the MCU? Uh, do you think that they'll land on their feet? Can they pull off a win? Can they pull the big comeback? Leave me a comment and let me know your thoughts. And that's it for this episode. And again, tune in, hit like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, become a Patreon supporter. Order. I'm going to have some interesting merchandise available uh, by the next episode, so definitely tune in. And until then, create your day, create your life. Peace.